We're at lesson 3.5e and we're going to be applying properties strategically. When solving mathematical or real-world problems, we can apply operations that will reduce the number of calculations or make the calculations easier. If a series of operations are performed correctly and each step is validated by a property or by the order of operations, then the final result must be valid. Here we have 1 and 25 hundredths plus 67 hundredths plus 75 hundredths. If we change the order with the commutative property of addition and we move this 75 hundredths over here and the 67 hundredths back over here, we can look at this and if we think about money, this would be like a dollar 25 plus 75 cents. Well, that would be two dollars, wouldn't it? Now we can just add this two, this whole number, to the 67 hundredths and have two and 67 hundredths. By using a property, we can solve this using mental math. And you might even do this with mental math without even realizing you're using the commutative property of addition. We've got quite a bit going on here, so try to pay attention. It says the value of shares of stock varies as the price per share changes. So the value of like one share of stock, it's going to vary depending on the price of the shares. So it could go up, it could go down. You hear about the stock market going up or down. So that's going to make the price of the stock vary day by day. It says Emma bought six shares of stock for $4.79 per share. The price increased $1.35 per share by noon, then decreased $0.79 cents per share by day's end. It wants to know what was the total value of Emma's shares at the end of the day. It also wants to know did they gain or lose value during the day, and we need to justify the steps. And it says circle the correct word. So for A, we have a choice of original or final. It says the original or final value of Emma's shares is equal to six times $4.79. So is that the original value or the final value? Well, it says she bought six shares of stock for $4.79. Then it increased and de decreased. So this was what happened at first. This is the original value, six times $4.79. For B, it says the noontime gain or loss in the value of her shares is equal to six times $1.35. So is it a gain or a loss that it says the price increased $1.35 per share? Well, it increased, so that would be a gain. We have six times the increase of each stock. That's a gain. C says the end of day loss in the value of one of or all of her shares is equal to six times that 79 cents. So is it is six times 79 cents one of or all of her shares? Well, it says it decreased 79 cents per share, but she bought six of them. So we've got six times 79 cents. So that would be all of them because it's being multiplied by six by all of her shares. Okay, keep following me here. So we know she bought six shares at $4.79 each. We know the price increased by $1.35 at noon. That was for each one. And then the price decreased by 79 cents at the end of the day. And that's for each one. D is saying add the expressions, simplify the sum, and justify each step. So we have six times $4.79, that's what she initially paid and bought for her shares, plus six times $1.35, plus six times a negative 79 cents. Well, since this is multiplied by six, and this is multiplied by six, and this is multiplied by six, we can just put the $4.79, the $1.35, and the negative 79 cents into one big parenthesis, 
and put one six on the outside so that we could multiply by distributing that six. See, they're all being multiplied by six anyway. That's the distributive property. We can also change their order with the commutative property of addition. And we can put this $1.35 over here and this $4.79 over here. And now we have these two next to each other. We change the order with the commutative property. Now that we have these two together, we can group them together in brackets. The reason we're using brackets is because we have one big parentheses here and here, and then that negative 79 cents is in its own little parentheses. To make it easier on our eyes, we can put brackets there as our grouping symbol. If we have $4.79 and we add a negative 79 cents, well, we're just left with $4. By doing that, we're left with 6 times $1.35 plus 4. We can add this 1 hole to this 4 hole and get $5.35. We have 6 times $5.35. We multiply it, we get $32.10. The total value at the end of the day of her six shares is $32.10. So the shares gained value. To determine if there was a loss or gain, we compare the final price to the purchase price. She originally paid $4.79 for six of them. We multiply and we know her purchase price was $28.74. Now it's worth $32.10. That's gained value. We can interpret $1.35 plus the negative 79 cents as the change in value of Emma's shares. They went up by $1.35, but by the end of the day, they went back down 79 cents. So the true increase in its value would be the $1.35 plus the negative 79 cents. The price increased by $1.35 per share by noon. It decreased by 79 cents by the end of the day. So the true amount that it increased was 56 cents. That's the overall change. If Emma had purchased 10 shares instead of her six, her shares would have increased in value by $5.60. We would just multiply the 56 cents times the 10 shares. So I wanted to clarify something before we move on to the next lesson. The difference between an additive inverse and an additive identity. An additive inverse is the opposite of a number across zero on a number line. So if we have a positive five, it's additive inverse is a negative five, it's its opposite. If we have a negative eight, it's opposite, it's additive inverse would be a positive eight. Now for additive identity, zero is an additive identity. Notice it says additive because when we add zero to a number, the number keeps its identity. The sum of additive inverses of five plus a negative five is going to equal the additive identity zero. So zero is an additive identity because if we add it to five, it's five is going to keep its identity. If we add it to negative 8, negative 8 is going to keep its identity. So do you see how the sum of the additive inverses is equal to that additive identity, 0? Now there's also a multiplicative inverse and a multiplicative identity. A multiplicative inverse is the product of a non-zero number and its reciprocal, which is equal to 1. So we have two-thirds, it's reciprocal, we flip it around, and that's three-halves. We do two times three, which is six, three times two, which is six, we have six-six, that's equal to one. So when we multiply this number times its reciprocal, it's equal to one. That's a multiplicative inverse, it's the product of a non-zero number and its reciprocal. If we have a negative three-fourths, multiplied by a negative four-thirds, it's reciprocal, it's flipped upside down, notice it kept the negative sign. We have a negative times, times a negative, so it's going to be a positive. We have 12 twelfths, which is equal to 1. So 1 is a multiplicative identity. When we multiply a number by 1, 
that number keeps its identity. If we multiply two-thirds by one, it's equal to two-thirds. It kept its identity. Same with negative three-fourths. It's going to stay and keep its identity. So the product of multiplicative inverses is equal to the multiplicative identity, one. Okay? Do you remember from last year how to find the percent of a number? That's what we have to do in this one. It says last year, Dave paid $25,000 for a new car. Since then, it's decreased in value by 15%. How did the value of his car change and by how much? So we need to find 15% of 25,000. If you don't remember how to do that, we're going to walk through it. But that was sixth grade math 8.3b, and it will be linked in the description if you need a real quick refresher. So what we're going to do is we're going to write 15% as a decimal and then multiply. So 15%, we take off that percentage sign, and we put a decimal point one, two hops over so that the five is in the hundredths place. So this is 15% in decimal form. We multiply it by 25,000. And remember, when you multiply with decimals, however many decimal hops are in the problem is how many are going to be in the product. So once we did our multiplication and our addition here, we had one, two hops. So we're going to go one, two hops. We've got 3,750. So the value of Dave's car decreased by $3,750. That's 15% of the 25,000. And just out of curiosity, what would it be worth now? Well, all we have to do is do the 25,000 minus the 3,750, and we know it's now worth $21,250. Okay, we're finally finished with lesson 3.5. We're going to move on to 3.6, which you can see is split into five parts because the first part of it is a getting ready. We're going to be doing estimation strategies and using compatible numbers. So another way to easily remember additive inverse versus additive identity is just remember, inverse means opposite. An identity would be what makes that number keeps its identity. When you're adding, it would be using a zero. When you're multiplying, it would be using a one. A multiplicative inverse would just be a reciprocal, a flipped upside down version of that fraction. Join me for 3.6. And as I always say, I hope you have a really wonderful day. Bye.